Welcome to my Arknights Beginner's Guide series. In this video we will be covering the basics of Arknights and I hope that this video will get you started on your Arknights journey. So sit back and enjoy. There are three main currencies in the game, LMD, Originium, Arundum and Sanity. Lungmen Dollar or better known as LMD is your gold in Arknights. Everything requires LMD, technically, leveling up operators, promoting operators, crafting etc. This currency is extremely common but you always seem to run out of it very quickly. It can be obtained by clearing stages and some stages are even dedicated to farming LMD. Arundum is the main gacha currency. For those of you uncultured people, I mean innocent people out there, gacha is a system in games made especially to tempt players into spending in real life money. You will do summons on the banners in hopes of getting a raid up character. The only purpose of Originium is for you to try hard on these banners. Haha, <laughs> suffer. You can obtain Originium by doing weekly annihilation stages. The total Originium you can earn in one week is 1800 from Annihilation, which is about 3 summons on the gacha. Originium can be used to convert into Arundum and Sanity. However, I would not recommend doing these unless absolutely necessary as Originium is limited and should only be used to purchase skins in the skin shop. You can obtain Arundum as a first-time clear reward for stages. Once you complete certain stages in the main story, a challenge mode will be unlocked. Completing the challenge mode grants you another Originium. However, like said, Arundum is limited. Once you have collected all the Originium in the main stages, you have no access to more unless there is an event with new stages or you can spend your precious hard-earned money for these virtual rocks that cause rock cancer. Lore Meme. You'll understand once you know the lore. Sanity. Ah, the memes. Sanity is used to complete stages. Some stages like CC stages do not use Sanity. However, Sanity is often an issue as it runs out quickly. Sanity potions or Sanity pots grants more Sanity. You can get two every week by doing your weekly missions here. There are memes about how difficult stages in some events make you lose not only your in-game Sanity but also your IRL Sanity. Oh yes and remember to be a hard-working doctor and complete your daily missions, you get some goodies by doing so. These four currencies are displayed here in the main menu. There are also other currencies such as certificates, shop vouchers, headhunting parametric models and intelligence certifications. These currencies are not as commonly used but I'll explain them because this video is the complete guide. Certificates or certs for short can be obtained through obtaining new operators or getting a duplicate in the gacha. When you obtain a new operator, you will receive a distinction, or as it's commonly put, gold cert. You can spend it in the gold cert shop. However, I would recommend you to save up 180 of these to purchase a 6 star of your liking in the shop. The 6 star and 5 star operators are always changing according to the current standard banner. I'll explain what the standard banner is later. Next is the commendations, or better known as green certs. These can be obtained rather easily by many methods. 1. Getting duplicates of operators you already own. 2. Trading tokens of full potential operators. The entire chart can be found in the search shop by pressing on this button. This is the entire chart. Ps. You can only trade tokens for certs only when that operator is at max potential, potential 6. Shop vouchers. You'll probably only use these to buy the chip catalyst. What is a chip catalyst? A chip catalyst is used along with a chip pack to make a dual chip, which is used to further upgrade your operators. Ethan and Swire are also in this shop but they are very niche characters, which is to say absolutely dog poop in some situations, so it is not really worth the vouchers. Once you reach end game, you might want to consider purchasing them for collection purposes. Next are the royal tokens. 
these are worth grabbing even though they are super expensive. Though I only advise you to buy these near the endgame. Headhunting parametric models can only be obtained via summoning on limited banners, I'll explain these later, you will receive headhunting data contracts when summoning on the limited banner which will later be converted into headhunting parametric models after the banner ends. You can use these to buy the materials in the store. Oh yes, the headhunting data contracts can be used to purchase a character in the limited time spark store which opens during a limited banner. However, unless you are a whale or a dedicated saver, you will probably never purchase anything in this store due to the huge amount of headhunting data contracts required. Intelligence certs. These are rare and you'll barely even head into the store at all. Just know that these can only be obtained during rerun events that you have once participated in before. Next we have the furniture store. The currency here is furniture parts, which look like this, and this. These furnitures are decorations for the dorms and increases the ambience level of the dorms. You don't have to buy that many furnitures from here as you will get furniture sets in certain events. If you want to buy something here, try to save enough furniture parts for a complete set. Do not use your originium to buy these furnitures as it is a waste. Use furniture parts instead. The Outfit Store. This shows the purchasable skins currently in the game. These skins will not be obtainable when the shop duration ends and can only be obtained in future skin events. You use Oruginium to buy these skins. Skins that cost 18 Originium have a special effect that changes certain animations during combat. Skins that cost 15 Originium are just, well, skins. No special effects. Just a different art. Is it worth spending your Arundum on these skins? You tell me. Last but not least we have the credit store. The currency can be obtained in many ways such as using your friend's units, donating clues etc. You can check the other methods here. Phew. That was a lot of stuff. But wait. There's more. The characters in Arknights is called operators and there are different rarities from 1 stars, robots only, to 6 stars. Robots are these dudes, You'll usually get them for free but they all suck so, no don't build them unless it's for fun or for the memes. The higher the rarity, the stronger the operator. Usually. Except for this guy. Passenger. It is extremely important to spread your resources amongst your operators and not just invest in one six star or five star. You have to achieve a balance in levels amongst all your operators. Even the 4 stars you might be using in early game. And note that some 4 stars have a use even in late game. Like this operator, the DP Queen. The most common question for new player is. Do you need a lot of 5 stars and 6 stars? The answer is no you can beat the game, clear all main stages, with only 4 stars and lower operators but in certain events like CC, I'll explain at the back, having 5 stars and 6 stars will help you achieve higher risk. As the saying goes, high risk high rewards. If you achieve risk 18, you'll get all the rewards in the event, which I couldn't for CC5. I was only a 2 months old player then, also, clearing stages will be considerably more difficult with low rarity operators so having a couple of 6 stars is always a good addition to your team, but not necessary. For you meta slaves out there, tier lists are all over the internet. I will be making my very own tier list video soon so stay tuned. First let's talk about levels. The level cap, max level, an operator can reach is different for each rarity. For 6 stars, it is at 90 when they are at elite 2 and the level cap decreases as the rarity decreases. Once you hit the level cap, you can promote your operator. You will need to collect all the materials in this section to be able to do so. Each operator requires different materials so do keep that in mind. When you promote your operator, their level will reset to 1, but the stats will carry over so do not worry. You will get new skills with certain promotions so it is always a good addition to make your team stronger. 
Your operator starts at Elite 0 and caps at Elite 2 as you promote them. Also, some characters truly shine with certain skills. For example, Aefiala's third skill is the skill that makes her broken, similar to Silver Ash. Six star operators always come with three skills when you reach Elite 2. Five stars four stars comes with two skills at Elite 1. Three stars with only one skill no matter at which promotion level and two stars and one stars with none at all. However, like I said, you should not rush to Elite 2 an operator in early game. Always maintain a balance. Next is potentials. You can activate a potential by getting a duplicate, which you will obtain the operator's token. Using the character's token or using the secondary tokens. However, these tokens are quite rare and I would not recommend spending them on an impulse on characters, especially for the 6 star variants. Also, for these tokens, you require 4 of them to raise the potential by 1. Skill levels are also important as it boosts the skill's effectiveness. Try to get it to level 7 at your own pace. Zesh's bonus tips. It is a better choice to invest in certain 5 and 6 star operators as they have a much higher use rate and might not be redundant in late game. Investing in 4 and 3 stars can be good for early game but I do not recommend going beyond elite one. This is because as you get more operators, you will realize your starting operators are being severely outdone by higher rarity operators, and you might think it was a waste of resources to build them. Unless of course, you have a waifu or a husbando. That is all for operators. Gotcha. The question is, is Arknights free to play? A welfare system called recruitment, weekly arundums and a 50 pity banner. I'd say Arknights is quite kind with their gotcha rates. Now what exactly is pity? Pity is a system where the chances of getting a 6 star operator is greatly increased after a certain number of summons. After 50 pulls, the subsequent pulls receive a higher chance for a 6 star to appear. For more info, look into here. When you first start, there is an exclusive banner with limited summons just for beginners. Once you reach the summon limit, this banner will disappear. I recommend you to spend all the attempts on this banner first before moving to the other banners. I will make a more in-depth gotcha guide soon. For now, follow this instruction. Combat. During combat, you need deployment points (DP) to deploy units. Units from different classes have different DP. The DP is shown here. Usually, there is a natural DP region mechanic in the stage. However, in some stages like Annihilation, this mechanic is removed and you require Vanguard units to gain DP. These are the DP cost labels. Supporter. Focus on debuffing or buffing enemies or allies. Can only be deployed on alleviated platforms. Deployment cost. Medium. Caster. High arts damage dealers. Can only be deployed on alleviated platforms. Snipers. Focuses on dealing physical damage, usually. Can only be deployed on alleviated platforms. Deployment cost, low to medium. Guards. Focuses on dealing physical damage, usually, and arts damage, occasionally, can only be deployed on ground platforms. Vanguards. Focuses on dealing physical damage, usually, they are also usually the first operator deployed due to their low DP cost. They can also generate DP to help with DP region. Can only be deployed on ground platforms. Deployment cost, low. Defenders. Focuses on tanking and increasing survivability among the operators. Usually comes with higher HP and depth than most operators. Specialists. They have different abilities, pull, push, stun enemies, low redeployment times, and of course, shooting the schist out of your operators. You can view an operator's class by doing this. There are many other subclasses in each class. But that's too much info for one video. 
I will make another video separately. Stay tuned by subscribing. Game Mechanics There are two forms of damage in the game. Arts Damage and Physical Damage There are two forms of damage reduction. DEF stands for Defense and RES stands for Resistance. Dry Bit Defense is calculated with subtraction. Say if you have 900 attack and enemy has 300 defense. 900 minus 300 equals 600. You will deal 600 damage. Resistance is division. If you have 900 attack and enemy has 20 res. 20% 20 of your damage is reduced. You will only deal 80% of damage. 900 times 80% equals 720. You will deal 720 damage. Aggro system. This is extremely important so listen up. The aggro system in Arknights is very simple. The enemies will focus on targeting the operator that is most recently deployed within their range. This is an example. Zesh's tips. It is recommended to have a habit of deploying squishy operators such as snipers, casters and supporters first before placing down the tankier ones such as the guards and defenders. In other words, the operators that can only be deployed on alleviated platforms should be deployed quickly followed by the ground units. Of course, in some stages where the first wave starts early, you will have to deploy the ground units to block the incoming enemies, but it is still a good practice nonetheless. The aggro system seems really insignificant at first but believe me. You can get wrecked just because of the bad placement of operators. Base. Looking at the left side of the base, trading centers, blue. Allows you to trade gold for LMD or originium shard for originium. Factories, yellow. Produce gold, originium shards, battle records for upgrading operators and dual chips. Power plants, green. Produce drones that are used in upgrading your facilities and boosting the production of facilities. You will hear these numbers often, 2, 5, 2 and 2, 4, 3. This represents the facilities on this side of the dorm. 2, 5, 2 means 2 trading centers, 5 factories and 2 power plants. And 2, 4, 3 is. Figure it out yourself. 2, 5, 2 gives you more products but you will face the problem of not being able to upgrade all your facilities due to the lack of power as you only have 2 power plants. So I recommend you to start with 2, 4, 3 at first and once everything is upgraded, dismantle a power plant and switch it to 2, 5, 2. Now, once you have a level 3 trading center, you unlock the option to trade for Originium instead of LMD. So, Originium or LMD? Simple answer. LMD. Unless you have a team of Elite 2 operators that can carry you through all game content including events. Also, LMD is used frequently, and boy do you get a lot of them in one day. Zesh's tips. Do not underestimate the importance of the base. You can get a lot of materials just by sending operators to work in the facilities. Which brings me to the next part, always ensure that your facilities are occupied. This might be hard at first but once you obtain more characters, it is possible. Do note that the maximum number of operators occupying a facility increases from 1 to 3 as you upgrade your facilities. Having more operators in the facilities means better efficiency. Now another important bit. Each operator has a special talent that helps with the production of the facilities. Read them carefully and deploy them respectively. Don't just randomly dump operators here and there. Working in facilities consumes morale. Once an operator is tired, take him or her out of the facility and put him or her in the dormitories to region morale. The operator that has an affinity with the facility will be placed all the way to the left. Oh and also don't forget the control center. It gives more boosts to speed up productions in facilities. Our number one bunny girl Amaya has an affinity with it. 
You can view your total daily production by doing this. Now for the facilities on the right. The reception room is on the top right. This facility might be confusing at first but it's relatively simple. You will get one clue every day. Collect all seven clues to unlock exchange. You can obtain more clues by receiving them from friends in your friend list. After you unlock the exchange and the exchange ends, you will get a large sum of friendship credits which you can purchase stuff in the credit store here. Ah oh yes. Friends. Everyone needs them. I recommend you to head over here and type random letters into the search bar and spamming add friends to everyone in sight. Try to get friends with higher levels as they might have higher rarity operators that you can borrow over here. This helps with clearing difficult stages. Having friends is extremely important in Arknights. It is best to fill up the entire friends list with people and have a couple of friends of higher level than you. Next is the workshop. This place is where you do the crafting. Simple enough. You can come over here to make materials as well as exchange chip types. Or dismantle furniture. Next is the training room, you don't have to worry about this one. You can leave it empty since you are a beginner. Simply put, it's a place to make your operator's skills even stronger by unlocking, Masteries, the max level of an operator's skill is level 7, Mastery 3. This is only for late game players as the materials required is extremely costly. Lastly, the office. Assign operators here to decrease the duration of the refresh attempt cooldown as well as increase the number of job tags present in recruitment. You have different refresh attempts according to the office's level. These facilities can only hold one operator each. And you cannot choose which facility goes where, so keep that in mind to prevent confusion. Recruitment is a whole new box of troubles. I'll open it in another video. For now, this is the chart for recruitment. Do come back to this video to refer to this chart each time you do recruitment. Set time to 7 hour 40 minutes, the longer the time doesn't mean the better the operator. 6 star operators, yes you can get a 6 star in recruitment, can only be obtained by selecting the extremely rare, top operator, tag. If you are lucky, you can get one every one month. There is a stage specifically for farming building materials here. These building materials is used to upgrade your facilities you might want to farm these from time to time. Combat Terminal. This shows your position in the main story. Main story determines your position in the game. When you first start, it is best to keep progressing through the stages until at least near the end of chapter 5. This is because stages in the main story arc are usually your go-to option for material farming. This shows the current event taking place. If it is blank it means that there are currently no events with stages. This is your to-do list section. Annihilation is shown here. Always get all the originium you can every week. It adds up. There is a contingency contract, CC, box over here as well. But since I completed all stages already, it is blank. These are daily stages you can complete for some rewards. There is a fixed rotation of the stages and they change daily. They are permanent stages so take your time to complete them. See all these weird boxes. These are all debuffs to add to your team to make the stage more challenging. These debuffs are called risks. The debuffs in this column is worth 1 risk. The debuffs in this column is worth 2 risks and this is worth 3 risks. However, these two columns are locked at first and can only be unlocked when you achieve the specified risk. Your risk value is displayed here. This is the support column that gives you a buff. 
This ensures that you can get a risk rate of zero quite easily. It usually buffs your units. However, no matter how many risks you add, if your support column is active, your risk will always be zero. So you have to do the stages without the support column to get higher risks. Zesh's tips. Do use the support unit function, not the support column, to get an extra operator to deploy. If you do not see an operator of your liking, hit refresh here. If the operator belongs to a friend, this part is displayed in orange. If the operator belongs to a random doctor, player, it is blue and a notification will pop up when you press it. If you see a high rarity, high level operator you do not have, add him or her as a friend so you can use it again next time. To add friend, do this. You can also add the person as a friend at the end of the match like this. If the player is already a friend, these two notifications will not show. That is all for part 1. Thank you for making this far, but wait don't go. Honestly, this was a lot of work. I had troubles with the text to speech software and stuff. Since you made it to the end of this video, please subscribe, it means a lot to me and of course, look forward to part 2. Part 1 is made to just give a brief overview of all the stuff Arknights has to offer. Part 2 is where the in-depth bits come into play. We will be tackling how to manage your currencies and which things are worth purchasing in the many stores. See you.